So the top unit out of the three, it's got a failed fan. It sounds like a bearing or something, uh, which is a bit annoying. What I'll do is I'll just turn the microphone up so you can hear it. So the, the the other two units are absolutely fine, it's just the top one. It's almost the end of the day, that's why there's pretty much no power um, coming from the panels. But all the units have been okay apart from this very top one. I've noticed that it's been getting a lot warmer than the rest. And the annoying noise that it's now making with the fan is obviously a very good indication that I need to replace it before it stops working altogether and then it overheats, which obviously we don't want. So what I'll do is I'll, I've just got it screwed in here, that's actually all that's holding this whole thing on the wall. So what I'll do is I'll take these two screws off here, I'll put them on the other side, and that way I can unscrew the side of this uh, without having to take off everything, uh, without taking the solder and the battery out. I can just take this off, the fan will come off, and replace it. So let's move on to that. Now just before I pull this one off the wall, I've just turned it all back on again, and today's actually been a good yield. This is 1.3 kilowatts, almost, yeah, 1.35, today 1.4, 1.1, so overall, it's actually, these little things are doing pretty well for themselves, given how cheap they are. Right, so as we pull this apart, I'm hoping, you, what you'll see is that this, the fan on this one is quite thin, and then behind all that, you've got the heat sink, which has got the uh, MOSFET connected to it, so it's got a little plug on the end of this, so what I'll do is I'll disattach this and I've got another replacement fan but it's a lot bigger so we'll just see if that's going to work. So I'll just take this off. Now as you can see it's still kind of turned on so I'll try not to short anything. In fact I'm going to need two hands. Okay so this is how the fan looks. I'll just move this out of the way so it's not so noisy. Now if I bring that down to here, this fan is quite thin. The specs on it are 0.8 amps so quite low amperage it's obviously a cheap little fan nothing flashy about this thing at all um, the one I've, the only thing I've got that's the same size is this fan here which is obviously twice the size um, but the the main issue with this is that is it going to fit next to the or in the box with the if I come across here there's obviously that heat sink there so is this actually all going to fit in there um, it will obviously mount onto the screw holes, which is good, so it will sit quite nicely in there. Um, same screw holes, but obviously much, much bigger fan than, uh, than the current one, if I bring them side by side. Massive difference. So what I'll do quickly is I'll just unscrew this one. I'll screw this one in its place, and then we'll see if it actually fits into the, um, the green chassis. If not, um, we might have to do some some slight modding to make it fit because this is the only one I got. I really don't want to buy um, another fan and it's going to take a month to get here because I'll probably order it from AliExpress or something and I just I just want to get this in and why not just use this one that I've already got. It's been sitting around for about 10 years and I'm not sure where exactly it came out of but I'm thinking it's a super power supply. And as you can see the fan blades are massive in comparison to the old one. Um, really quite big there. So it's definitely going to push way more air than it's ever going to need, um, or the green unit's ever going to need, but that's okay. Um, bigger is better, right? So what I'll do is I'll screw that in, and we'll come back. So obviously before screwing it into this, I actually thought we might as well turn it on. I decided to snip the yellow wire since that's not needed. All we need is the positive and the negative. The other thing is um, we just need to check that the fan actually works. It's obviously been sitting around for, it could be 15 years. It's been a very long time this has been in the box. So we might as well use what we've got. Um, now if I connect that up, you can hear that and it actually sounds really good. So. The bearings on this are perfectly fine and it's a heck of a lot quieter than the original one at full noise which kind of sounds a bit like in fact that's actually not full noise but either way you get the point you've heard it before it makes a heck of a noise so these things are really loud and whiny and this is much much quieter and it pushes more air and why why not so let's get that mounted so with the with it mounted onto its metal um, case, or side case, 
let's see what it sounds like now and now well I've, I've just done it and it's quite a lot louder so this is what it sounds like so it's obviously the air having to be sucked past these pieces of uh, metal out the side that's causing the um, the sound to be much more uh, or to be much louder but that is blowing a lot of air which is fantastic. I'll just quickly show you kind of roughly with this piece of paper how much air that's kind of pushing as best I can um, without mucking around too much and if I try and get this so that it's going to stay in there without the wires pricking my fingers so you see the whole thing's moving but if I try and push that piece of paper towards the thing it's just not going so it's pushing a lot of air so, which is fantastic, it's really blowing. Uh, so, what I'll do is I'll just plug in the, the original fan and you can kind of see the difference. So, it's obviously easier with the camera on the tripod to do all this. So, if I poke that on there and connect that up, you can kind of only just see it spinning. And I'm hoping that's going to show up on the camera okay. But it's only just spinning. In fact, there's pretty much no air being moved whatsoever. And if I can try to put that on top, it's just... Obviously, it's just switched off. But it's really doing jack diddly squat. And if I quickly actually flip that across to this bad boy here... You'll see there is a lot of air. Um, however, in, in doing this whole process up to this point, I've actually just found one more fan. This one here. So I had this one here lying in a box as well. Now this is smaller than that one there. I'm not sure how well that's going to come from the camera because I can't see the screen. And it's obviously, if I put that there, about twice the size of the original fan. We stay with this big fan here, which is actually the fantastically good fan. This one here that doesn't blow as much air, or we need to find something that's as thin as this one here. What I'll do is I'll just quickly connect this one here up, and you'll see what that, the difference is with this one. At this one here is only uh, 0.06 of an amp, so slightly higher than this one in power draw but um, it's obviously a lot thicker. The blades are very much the same as this one here, but not obviously to the same extent. And if I connect this up to the battery, if I get it blowing the correct direction, it definitely doesn't blow as much. It is blowing um, far better than the original, um, there's definitely still quite a bit of airflow. I can feel it up to about here, which is good. Um, but it's um, definitely not to the same extent as this bad boy here. So first of all, let's see if this fits into the case. If this doesn't, this is now our backup plan uh, without spending any money. So let's just see if this one actually fits in. Okay, so if we try and put this up here, and I'll just move the cables out of the way a little bit so you kind of, so it'll almost kind of fit. Let's just see how well it does. And that's actually as much as it goes in. And what it's hitting, by the look of it, is it's hitting the circuit board which sits at the very bottom here. So that's a bit of a problem. And how are we going to overcome that? It's not hitting the MOSFET in the heatsink which is about here. It's hitting the circuit board that's hitting the bottom of this. So there's two things we can do. We can either move the fan from here and stick it on the other side of it. Or we can try the thinner um, version 2 of our replacement this one here and see if that'll help but in fact we can probably just fit let's see if that yeah so that's not going to go in either it just hits the um the bottom of the circuit board but you kind of just out of frame but yeah it's just not going to fit i think our best bet given that this is not going to fit is to change the fan to the other side of it, push this in a little bit and then just change that over just so it sits on the other side of it. It'll make it look more 
bigger and buttier, which is obviously what we like. So it doesn't need to look pretty, it just needs to uh, do the job. So, okay, so given that I needed to bend it a little bit, I thought I'll just cut the whole damn thing out. So I just got some tin slips, uh, tin snips. The metal's really thin uh, and easy to cut, so I just cut the um, the middle part out. Given that we're not going to need it, and the fan's going to be sitting in this position here, so let's just screw that in. So that's how it looks. Now that's obviously going to look pretty damn mean when you actually put that up on there. So let's do that. So it's going to sit like this. And I must say it looks pretty mean. It looks a bit overkill but that's okay. Overkill is good when you can use parts that you've had sitting around for t over 10 years. So the only issue now is obviously we need to get the uh, wires somehow through. What I might do is just drill a small hole and that way it'll tidy that up. So I'll just stick a nice hole right beside it and then put some ends on it and then away we go. Right, so I'm kind of rushing to, to um, make sure we have enough sun to be able to turn this back on again. So what I'll do is I'll quickly solder this up nice and quick. That'll do, I think. Yep, that'll do. And turn the soldering iron off always a good idea I also put some shrink wrap on it to make it um, to give me extra points to make it look better <laughs> and we'll just try and tidy this up a little bit bring our shrink rack over hopefully it fits because that's always a bit of a problem if it doesn't fit that's gonna look nice something like that and now we just need our blower to um, to heat that up Okay, so two seconds with the heat gun. Oops, everything blows off the table. Perfect, just like that. Almost looks like new. Well, almost. So, now let's stick it up back on the wall and see if it actually works. Okay, so just before I stick it on, what you'll see is I drilled a hole through there, which means it came out there and that's, well, it's far too much cable but hopefully um, we'll be able to fit that in and then connect it into the circuit board. So, let's, uh, moment of truth is trying to put this up there. Now I'm gonna have to um, move the camera to actually get that plug, this a little JT connection in there. And then once I've done that, I'll bring the camera back. Okay, so camera's back, just to make sure that we capture any white smoke, blue smoke or uh, any other smoke that comes out. So, if I turn this this way, you guys should be able to see the fan blades. I've just plugged it in. It's going to sit something like this, which is going to be good. And let's turn it on and make sure it doesn't go bang. Perfect, so that there's tons of air. Which is good. It's working, it hasn't blown up. We should be able to set the fan speed to turn it down a little bit. Uh, which I can't remember how to do, so just bear with me for a second. Is it this button? Yes it is. Um, that's the light brightness of the screen. The second one is the fan speed, max fan speed. So we should be able to set that down. It is regulating the fan speed, so that's really good. So at least that function's working as well. And to be honest, all it needs to be on is on that lower setting because even on the lower setting, it's still blowing a ton of air. So, I wonder if I can try and make it easier to see. Trying to show air is quite difficult on camera. But anyway, uh, so, we are back on full again. I'll turn these other ones off. So as you can hear, that's so much quieter. If I put that there, that versus that whiny noise. We don't like the whiny noise. So I think really well a job well done really. And we should be able to set that back down a little bit. Brightness, oops, fan speed. That's on full. You can actually feel the air coming out the other side now. Let's see it's there. 
that way it's going to sound the same as the rest of them anyway perfect so now we'll just screw the side on and it's done so that's how it looks perfect all screwed up all nicely done uh, what it actually means is that we've got that other fan that we end up ended up finding and we could obviously put that on one of these other ones if the fans fail on one of these units the cheap fans only you know if you would actually buy one of these fans off aliexpress i'm sure it's only a couple of dollars anyway so it's not a major if this is the only fault that i've really had with these units then hey it's not a big fault and obviously a fan is um, one of those things that's always the first thing to kind of go um and so let's just turn it on sounds pretty good I can probably turn it down a little bit lower but you can feel the air just coming out the other side so yeah I can turn that all the way down though it's out in the garage so it really doesn't matter how noisy these things are as you can hear those other ones are even louder so yeah job well done I thought <coughs> and it looks beautiful so well it looks kind of more modern and um, beefier so let's go with that at least it works and uh, We'll do another video on an update of all these units in the next video. Thanks guys for watching. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Sorry about the long video, but hey, you can always skip through a little bit bits of it. Thanks again. See you guys.